So the head of the open embassy in Bokrek was situated in the, the south of uh, Flanders. Uh, before I started there in 2009, I worked for 10 years at the French Center for Public Culture and the uh, Baron <coughs> UK Center for Cultural Heritage. Um, I have a long presentation, I have little time, so I'll talk very quickly. If I go too fast, just give a sign. Um, and is it already too fast? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's not too fast. I hope I can talk no. So ICH in and uh, Bokrik. So what is Bokrik? Bokrik is first and foremost a, a large public park, a green park uh, in between two cities where there is a museum, <coughs> playground, arboretum, fishing ponds, cycling through water, very uh, popular, the Guardian only uh, uh, talked about it today on its website. We have plus minus one million visitors a year from all of the domain. But you have to know that the domain, except if it's for the museum, is free. So it's easy to get at least one million people, I think. Uh, we have a full staff of 500. Are they there, there every day? No, it's in summer when uh, everybody is working, including, uh, including the students, uh, that we are uh, 500 people staff. It looks like this. These 550 hectares. And this is uh, the Open Air Museum that I'm responsible for. So what is about this open air museum? It's uh, 95 hectares, and like most open air museums, it's about the built heritage, the tangible heritage, also the living and natural heritage, and intangible heritage. Uh, and we focus on the culture of daily life, and we have four major themes, craftsmanship, the culture of building and living, culture of eating and drinking, rituals and festive uh, events, and uh, we receive um, approximately 300,000 visitors uh, every seven months, we're open for seven months uh, a year, and we are uh, accredited by UNESCO as an expertise center within the ICH Convention, first time 2010, 2011, and 2017-2018. In 2016, the museum published um, a manifesto, and in that manifesto it published 15 ambitious visions for the future. Of course, as most of you know, I think, open air museums are, well, thought of as uh, harbor places for the past. And we didn't want to be that anymore. We wanted to be there for the people of the day. And we started asking ourselves, uh, what is it in our collections, what is it in our stories that is relevant for the people of the day? Uh, and that's really completely changed uh, the way we went about things, for example. Ten years ago, we would have said we are a museum about the past and we are here for people for the present. Now we say we are a museum about the present, for the people of today, and we tell stories about the present, past, and the future. So it's completely different. I won't give you the details on all of them, but one is interesting to stop at, and that's uh, ambition number six, and approximately translated, it's, uh, it's like this, intangible cultural heritage forms an integral part of the collection of Bokhain. It runs as a red thread or a fil rouge through all aspects of what it means to be a museum. So this is rather explicit. Um, how did ICH become uh, ambitious 6 out of 15 in the Museum Manifesto on the future of an open air museum uh, in Bokhain? And how does it relate to the ICH policy of UNESCO and of the Flemish government and cultural brokers working around that. As you all know, 2003 convention. Uh, also, what the accreditation of the NGOs means. But when we go see in, uh, in Flanders, it's in 2006, if I recall correctly, uh, that uh, Flanders ratified the 2003 ICH convention. In 2010, there was an important, I think, vision text by the uh, um, Flemish Minister of Culture, Jules Schaudi, on ICH policy and how you could integrate that as a museum or as an actor or, and so on. And Gurin uh, and her colleagues from me were very active. Mark uh, Jacobs from Baden has, has also been very active in implementing all these ideas, not only to the, to, uh, the policy makers, but also to the cultural heritage organizations. And that led to a new heritage degree uh, in 2017. And before that, well, the heritage degree before, they talked about ICH. 
But this heritage degree very clearly stipulated that there must be a center on ICH, which is we at the moment. But also, everybody, even if you're an art museum, France should work around ICH next to the tangible heritage. So that's a very strong implementation by the government. And in 2018, um, the Flemish Minister of Culture, by then Sven Gatz, who's still the Minister of Culture, uh, he thought of a system of applying grants uh, to masters and apprentices. It's a bit in line of the uh, living heritage, uh, living human treasures uh, idea, which was prepared by cultural organizations, by FAM, by we, uh, by a group of uh, NGOs uh, working around that. <coughs> as I said, in 2010, 7, and 17, we were uh, accredited as an NGO. Why do I say it? Is it to boast? Here, it's not about boasting because you all know what it means. But to be very honest, it's a very powerful lever when we go talking about subsidies. For example, I give an example from, I think, 2013, when we were accredited three years, we went to the National Lottery. And we didn't have our manifesto in the future. We were still considered, well, a bit backward, actually, as an open air museum. And we went to discuss uh, a possible uh, subsidy. and. Uh, it was so low that we couldn't believe it, what they wanted to give us. And then we started posting, which is not in our nature, I think. Mm -hmm. And we started talking about currently projects that we had been doing and about accreditation by UNESCO. And uh, the subsidy was doubled after these two mentions. So after that, we learned to trick. And now we say it all the time. Um, so hence, from 2010 onwards, we identified <coughs> ourselves as an active agent in the safeguarding of ICH. And you can see what reasoning behind it uh, is. Our main focus, not our sole focus, but our main, but our main focus is craftsmen. Uh, so what has been new or different before 2010, before the accreditation and afterwards? Of course, this is not exactly the same. But at first, there was not a large difference, of course, because the idea behind the ICH policy by UNESCO is a different language. And as a museum, you have to learn this language, especially because you're not every day talking this language. And that's, the, I think, is um, the real challenge for museums who want to work on ICH. And we do not have full-time staff members to take this up. It's very important to have networks uh, like we have in Flanders, to participate in on a regular basis, so that you can, uh, so that you remember um, the words, the phrases, uh, the ideas uh, behind it. So in 1958, we were uh, we opened, and we already had from day one demonstrations by local craftspeople. Uh, in 2014, almost 60 years later, so we started probably Gandishes. We call it BKFK, like it stands there. It's a museum project on craftsmanship where we link traditional craftsmanship with present day designers, economics, uh, present day craftspeople. And the idea is that they challenge each other. So we are very careful not to say that the traditional bearers have to be remodeled by the present day flashy contemporary designers. No. What we want to do is build bridges between them, make crossovers between them, open their eyes to a different set of skills. And we have, we have had some very beautiful results uh, on, on, a third, on a personal level between craftspeople who get interested more in design or in entrepreneurship, and on the other hand, uh, designers who firstly thought they were the world and then become very humble when they are faced by a long time skilled uh, person. In 2016, uh, we, our project was, was running so smoothly that it also became, in the museum itself, the umbrella term for everything that was new. Uh, so every time we changed the building or we did redevelopment, it was called Big Arca because it stood for some kind of a redevelopment uh, ID. Uh, when working together with these craftspeople, we um, encountered that a lot of them had nostalgic ideas about being a craftsperson. And most of them, um, we had a competition, for example, and the persons who won, the, who won the competition, they had no idea, how can I maximize my profit? How can I um, deliver 
500 of these leather items, uh, for example. So we wanted to sustain what they what they were doing. It was, that was the price for winning uh, the competition, but they were not able to make a business plan or to make profit out of it. And that was very interesting. And um, while they we heard on the one hand them complaining about we're not earning enough, and on the other hand, the, it was very clear that they didn't have the business skills. So we created Fakla, and it's, um, it's still in existence today. You can go there for free, and you get all this information. I will show you some pictures. <coughs> and then lastly, we got awarded a Craftsman. Craftsman still has to be activated, but it's about uh, a platform for craftsmanship and heritage for all over France, uh, for local heritage organizations, um, but with a strong focus on ICH. So I give you, I'll skip all this. Big at that Smithy, for example. So we not only have uh, our real Smithy uh, active, but we, we also have um, video mapping done by a well-known uh, production uh, facility. What's the craftsmanship or what, 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 is, what is the similarity between it? That's what we constantly try to do. We try to challenge um, craftsmanship by another form of craftsmanship and try to tell the story of the one by using another form of craftsmanship and method. Uh, this was uh, a project that was named Sengu. It's about wood. And uh, we had our carpenters and uh, an architect and a philo philosopher and we locked them up every month, one weekend. After the first weekend, uh, both parties, or all the parties, came to say to us, we do not want to do this anymore. We don't speak the same language, we're not on the same page, this is idiot idiotic. What was the problem that uh, the architect and the philosopher, they said, we want to have uh, this wood pen connection, this very typical uh, connection here, for example, this wooden pack, we want to replace that by something new. How could we do that? And how could they say, you can't. This is, this is magic. This is unique. This, this is impossible, what you want to do. You, do not, you don't know anything about wood. What do you want to say something like that? The second weekend, um, they still came complaining. And they said, no, we're not going to do this anymore. This has to stop. Uh, I can't sleep anymore. This is horrible. Um, the third weekend, we invited um, people from abroad who had a special kind of specialization, being in architecture or being a craftsperson specialized in wood. And then all things changed. And after one year, and well, some meetings and visits uh, in between, they came to this result. And they were all happy with it. So this is the, these are wooden locks from, uh, from the Open Air Museum. They created a structure. And you can, it's, it's like building blocks. You can do whatever you want with them. So it's not this, but it's a reinterpretation of what this means. And that was a good thing for our own carpenters to have their own um, idea about what working with wood can be to have a fresh look uh, at that. This is a story of our bread. Uh, this is our old, our old bakehouse. This is a brand new bakery that we opened. It is run by a real baker. And she almost always has a very bad mood. It's not easy working together, I can say that. Uh, but she is wow in what she does. So she bakes sourdough bread, bread, she gets up at three in the morning, and then two days later, the bread is ready. So it's, it's, real, it's really heavy doing. When the people come to our own uh, mediator in the, in the bakehouse, they always say, oh, this is what I like, and, and that person, she's so moody. But she, she's running a business. And so we started to introduce that into the narrative of our, of our own mediator, explaining, people, I'm paid to do this. This is actually relaxing. But that's, the per that's how, it, how it is when you go and do your craft uh, to earn your living. So we try to get the economic language also into the discourse. Hurry up. <coughs> This is a textile project uh, where we worked together with um, a fashion designer, but we asked him to reinterpret uh, countryside clothing into present day uh, clothing for the people who work in museums. So we do not want them to wear uh, 
uh, historic like costumes anymore, but to be clothed with a reference to the past, but uh, you can see them here below. Uh, and this is uh, the connection with our own uh, uh, collection. Remember the beer brewing uh, dossier uh, at UNESCO. So this is uh, historic beer brewing in, uh, in our own museum. Um, we just reopened uh, the brewery and we tried to tell the story about what's the difference between historic beer brewing in such an installation and uh, what does it mean to do that in, a, in an industrial installation. Uh, and two of our people have been appointed um, this grant um, for master and, uh, and apprentice. And very important for us is um, that we give youngsters of all ages and backgrounds the opportunity to test their own skills. And we have these ateliers. It's five euro for one atelier, so it's a democratic price, we think. Uh, it's about wood, as you can see here. It's about uh, paper, it's about textiles, it's about baking bread. And what we like very much is that um, young people who are not at home easily challenged uh, to replace a fitting or to nail something in the wall because we don't do that anymore. <coughs> that they are challenged to develop skills, to get a taste from it, and maybe <coughs> join us for an, uh, an Atelier Plus, uh, which we also have. Very quick, Bar Club. This is where we have, uh, where we invite craftspeople and entrepreneurs to have this uh, crossover discussions uh, with each other. So whether you're a student, a start, or a housewife, whether you are <coughs> 18 or 80, it doesn't matter, you can come for free uh, to VACLAB and uh, their sole function is to, to get you started, to inform you, uh, to bring you into contact with the right persons, um, how do you reach them, uh, <coughs> the master, we have passepartout sessions, uh, sorry? passepartout sessions, it's, uh, it's an inspiration session that is really tailor-made for a group of people. So that you are actually challenged to, to, to go out of your comfort zone and you are instructed on, uh, for example, um, business models. But they really are, they, they, their main aim is so that you can reflect on your own business. Not only general ideas, but really mm -hmm. to make it tailor-made so that you yourself reflect on what does this mean for my business, how can I implement it, and it's, it's not about, it's challenging. It's not saying, oh, it's, everything's all right, and if you do this, it will be better. Mm -hmm. They ask people, look at what you're doing now. Is this the right way, what you're doing? Should you be doing it in another way? This is the center that will start very soon, I hope, on the platform function on craftsmanship and heritage. And I think it's, it's very worthwhile to have these three aspects together. So we have the Big AK project in the museum, making links to outside the museum. We have Club, which is outside the museum, but is link, making links to the museum, focused on craftsmanship and entrepreneurship. And we have Craftspoint, which is the combination. Uh, it's about outside the museum, heritage and crafts, but it's also making links to inside the museum, together with Big AK and uh, Club. And museum seems to be a um, generic word, but museum is actually also um, the group of people working there. Yeah, the group of craftspeople, the people we invite for the summer festivals to perform, uh, the students we invite with their, uh, uh, the, the works they have made uh, to end their master and, and design <coughs> and so on. Um, so a very quick conclusion. Because this is about policy making, and I've been talking about, uh, a lot about the museum. I know that soil is a heavily laden word, uh, but if you have soil and uh, you have you have all these organisms, and they will get something out of it. But if you have manure and you have instruments and you have helping hands, you can create actually what you want. So what you focus on will grow, and I think that is what ha has happened in Flanders for the past few years, uh, I think 13 years by now, is that there was a UNESCO policy, it was ratified, um, and thanks to some of the people here present, it was made available to the cultural heritage organization in Flanders, and uh, I think some of us took it, 
uh, and went about it. And we were lucky that we had a network and still have a network of firms on ICH that makes it possible to reflect about <laughs> what we're doing. Is this what, what is the relation between uh, the UNESCO Convention of what use can we be uh, to each other? How to safeguard? How to develop uh, methodologies and so on. Thank you. Thank you.